about fucking time. Over an hour, I'm standing here holding my dick. You collecting this bastard? Yeah, an hour ago. Where the fuck have you been? You're lucky I show up at all. I told you we should have whacked this bitch a week ago, put her out of her misery. You show up this late just to fuck with me, and now I gotta listen to your shit. Now, you don't like it, Vinny. We call the whole fucking thing off, all right? Just drive, asshole. <laughs> You're extremely late. Don't tell me. Tell this fuck. I don't have much time. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Who would like to begin? Vincent, you seem a little upset today. This motherfucker is busting my balls like you wouldn't believe. I see. Precisely how is he busting your balls? This fucking Goomba has no goddamn respect for my feelings. He's a selfish piece of shit, and I'm tired of it. I'm a selfish piece of shit. This skinny bastard is supposed to pick me up quarter to six. He doesn't show the 20 to seven. Then when I tell him, hey, that's a shitty thing to do, he says we should go ahead and whack you. Did you say that, Paul? Did you suggest whacking me? No, maybe as a goof. We've talked about your anger. Barely a fortnight ago, you threatened to cut off my ear and shove it down my throat. I'm gonna bring that up again. I told you I was kidding with you. He doesn't give a fuck about my feelings at all no more. Tuesday night? Oh, here he goes. Oh, here he goes. Tuesday night, I spent two hours in the kitchen making that veal for him. The one I told you about last time. You know, with the mushrooms, the shallots, little white wine, not too much. So anyway, I'm in a hot fucking kitchen. Pounding this meat, very thin, just like he likes it. And I make a nice endive salad. Because I know how much this cocksucker likes a nice endive salad. Not your endive salad. You put too much anchovy paste. I told you that a hundred times. I break out in hives from your endive salad. You love my fucking endive salad. Your salad sucks. So, you were preparing a meal. Do you think he'd even call? Tell me he's gonna be a little late? No fucking way. I gotta find out on the street. He's out making collections with Jimmy Noodles and Benny the Whale. And this ain't the first time he comes home late because he's running around with those two fat pricks. Paul, have you been spending much time with Jimmy Noodles and Benny the Whale? You're goddamn right I have. You wanna know why? I'll tell you why. Because they never pulled the shit this fuck pulled last Friday. What? Marino? What? Marino? Yeah, Marino! Marina? It's the word. We've discussed the stress it could put on your relationship by you two working together in the same crew under Carmine's capo regime. Have there been problems? Oh, there's been problems. There's been fucking problems. Check this out. Carmine gives us this job to whack Tony the Weasel Marino, a pain in the ass deadbeat prick that owes 22 Gs and ain't worth the fucking oxygen. Now, I love my job, because I hate Tony Marino. I've been wanting a piece of him since the fifth grade when he DP'd me in front of the whole fucking neighborhood. DP'd? The weasel, the pants them. When this guy Marino was like 17, he got his kicks going around the neighborhood, the pants and the kids. One day, he grabs Paulie, the pants him, throws his underwear over a lamppost. Paulie had to walk home naked. I was 10 fucking years old! You know how long I've been carrying this shit around? I want the weasel so bad. It was coming out of my fucking paws. It's all he was talking about for two days straight. Hey, I'm talking now. I'm sick of him going off on a scumbag Marino. Will you shut the fuck up? He's talking about Marino so much. I swear to God, I don't know if he wants to kill him or if he wants to fuck him. You see what I gotta contend with? 
He drags me to fuck. Now nah, I mean, then he don't let me talk. We won't get anywhere if you both keep on shouting. Now let's just talk this through calmly, shall we? So, what happened with the Marino hit? We go to the weasel's house at 3 o'clock in the morning, and he's dead. We get him out of bed. You motherfucker. Surprise, surprise, Tony. Bet you didn't know that me and Vinny were living out here working for Carmine. Jesus, Paulie, that was 25 fucking years ago. What do you want, your pants back? <laughs> <laughs> You're a funny fucking guy, you know that, Tony? No, I'm not a funny guy. I'm a fucking asshole. You know that, a scumbag. <laughs> you know what we got here, Vinny? I think they call this poetic justice. Oh, come on, Paulie, take it easy. No, I'm going to take it very easy, Vinny. I've been waiting a long time for this, and I'm going to enjoy every fucking minute. Vinny, come on, get me off the hook here, will you? Fuck you. Tell me, uh, Tony, uh, are you comfortable? Because we got a long night ahead of us, and I gotta tell you, you're gonna be experiencing a great deal of stress this evening. Holy. Now let's get started, you motherfucker. I'm doing this for you, Paulie. No! He whacked him. He whacked him. You believe this self-centered linguine belching greaseball bastard? Vincent? I agree with Paul. Ha! <laughs> Your action showed real hostility to him. You knew how emotionally attached he was to that particular hit. <laughs> he likes his work. How the fuck do I know this one particular deadbeat meant so much to him? You knew. You knew. This was a situation where you both could have respected each other's feelings more. Paul, you should have known that Vincent was feeling slighted by your pathological obsession with the weasel. And Vincent, you could have given Paul the room he needed to torture him. Paul needed the closure. Well, you don't give a fuck about what I need. What about the problem we discussed last week? Any improvement? Nothing. Zero. It's always another excuse for this guy. Look, I got a lot going on, you know? Lots of stuff. I'm all jammed up. I come home from work and I'm beat. Then I gotta have this guy up my ass? I don't need that kind of pressure. I'm afraid we need to stop. I have another patient coming. But I think we've raised some important issues for you both to think about. The key is mutual respect and understanding each other's needs better. Now, it would be nice if you could practice showing each other a little respect before you leave here today. Look, I'm sorry, you know, about blowing Marino's brains out before you had a chance to torture him. I mean, you know, it wasn't right. I was only thinking about myself. Vincent can't do this on his own, you know. All right. I'm sorry I wasn't home uh, the other night for the veal. And the salad. And the salad. I mean, he does make a good on deep salad. I'll give you that, all right? And uh, I guess I have been spending a lot of time with, with noodles and the whale. Sometimes I get a little caught up in my work. I'm sorry, Vinny. I think you two are making splendid progress. Well done. Look, Paul, the Marino thing. You know I only did that because I hate to see you like that. I know. I, you know, I, I get a little crazy sometimes, you know? Hey, 25 years of pent-up shit. But, uh, hey, don't worry about it. So we're good? Yeah, we're good. Huh. Hey, Paulie. What? You know I fucking love you. Fucking love you too, asshole.
mind if we stop by and see Sammy Scoongeal and Joey Obatz on the way home? You ain't gonna see Obatz no more. Scoongeal's the guy who took care of him. What, he whacked him? No, he broke up with him. I'm but a fool, got a meal. Spark of your soul. I am but a fool, got a meal. Such a feeling as this Making all of my wishes come true